Well, hello traders and investors, LA Little here and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. Take a look at these markets from a neoclassical perspective, looking at supply and demand on the charts, asking ourselves what took place today that was significant and if it did, if something did, how does that uh, line up? What does it tell us? And that's what neoclassical is about. I look at these markets four days a week, Monday through Thursday, broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube and under the channel LA Little. If you want to subscribe to the show, just reach up in the right hand corner, do so anytime. Push content, you get a notification as far as today. It was more down, folks. Uh, they are starting to uh, press this thing hard at this point. Europe hammered, right? Right across the board. If you, if you look at uh, Asia hammered, right, pretty much across the board. Uh, there's another Europe there. there. You got bonds pushing up a little bit, uh, but for the most part, it was down. It was down everywhere. Russell continues to lead on the way down, pretty much across the board here in the U.S. And we're down there pressing against some uh, r rather uncomfortable uh, places at this point. All down again, another smacking uh, in the oil field, although it did try to reverse at the end. Gold up again, although it reversed as well. So we had some reversals into the day. Let's take a look at the charts. Talk about reversals. You actually have an over under here today, and it has lighter volume. You could even call it an extended move to bar reversal, but that is about as far as we can go. It doesn't have that much less volume, barely gets the reversal. It just seems like that's cutting hairs right there. You know, we may see this test again tomorrow, but it does look like it's ready to finally bounce. If we look at the uh, NASDAQ, a slightly different story over on the NASDAQ. Over here, you actually came down to test this low. You got into it, you got back over it, but you had more volume. That says it's going to try it again. And so the NASDAQ is set up. Uh, to try and test again. If we look at the NDX, on the NDX we actually had a uh, push down as well. Uh, that NDX uh, gets into these bars. There's really nothing significant. It breaks a swing point low, gets under this bar, really nothing here. As far as yesterday and today, yesterday's low 47.26.35. You close it today 47.26.91, so you back over it, but just like on the NASDAQ, too much volume. That one's probably going to try and test again as well. Finally, if we move to the Russell where it's been a bloodbath, the Russell continues to escalate to the downside. There's nothing here on this time frame uh, giving you any clue of a reversal. If you pull over the weekly chart, take a look at the weeklies. On the weeklies, you're coming back into that retest regen. Problem is, uh, you got to get a bounce, right? Because that's a full retest and beyond it now. Needs a bounce, needs it by the end of the week. That would be a full retest. Volumes are going to be lighter, it looks like. Um, yeah, it looks like they'll probably be slightly lighter. Uh, that would actually be a full retest, potential regenerate. We are at the point where this market has to decide if it's priced in a, uh, a different outcome on the election and if the buyers are willing to step up finally. If they're not, there's not much below where we're at to support this market and to support it in any larger way. So kind of that do or die spot is the way I look at this market, uh, the way I see it. Are there any clues elsewhere that gives us uh, any idea about what may happen next? Uh, it certainly isn't in the world market if you're looking for a bounce. If we push over, take a look at, for example, Switzerland just continues to escalate to the downside. If you look at uh, the CACs or the DAX, we'll start with the DAX first. The DAX goes and pushes all the way down towards this lower range again, back into these swing point highs. If you look at the French market, the CACs, uh, it does the same thing, escalates after that big reversal yesterday. So those did what they were supposed to do. And actually, almost everywhere we look, we continue to see everything do what it should do. And so, you know, from that perspective, no surprises. In other words, we come down to an area, we get a reversal, whatever it is that happens, it ends up doing what it's supposed to do. And so I don't see anything out here telling me to be totally fearful. But as I said at the top of the show there, 
this market's going to have to find itself pretty quickly because there's not much up underneath this anymore. And if it doesn't, uh, then we're really going to get some sort of a cascade to the downside. If we look over on the uh, currency markets, we don't have fast moves in currencies. We actually had the euro trade back up to the bearish retest regenerate. In other words, we broke swing point highs up here. That's where you would expect it to regenerate to the downside. As it goes back up there, it's got some pretty good volume as it's coming back. It hasn't quite touched it. But you do have a huge volume bar here. It's way more than six bars. This is probably going to reverse and come back the other way. Whether it does the touch or not, that looks to be what's going to happen there. And that actually, if we look over at the dollar, that actually lends credence to the dollar because the dollar actually looks like it's ready to bounce. Comes into this little area down here we were talking about. Does have about the same amount of volume, slightly less. Reverses, does a hammer reversal. This one wants to trade higher. So we're going to see those trades that we've seen, for example, in gold reverse. And that's what you started to see today. Gold reverses. We had the Fed come out. Fed uh, really didn't back down from its hawkish stance very much. Gold simply comes back up into do a bearish retest and regenerate. And so now it's going to try to regenerate back to the backside. All of these things you can see coming. These are the kinds of things that I tell subscribers you know, on a daily basis uh, here. As a matter of fact, I think I even highlighted gold this morning, if I remember right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, these things are these these, these are kind of classic setups, right? Uh, you, you had, you know, we were talking about gold earlier. We had potential sell here, right? It got into it, right? But couldn't quite reverse it. Had a little bit uh, decent volume, but it was coming in that big bar. But it did get over it, gapped over it today. So what does it do? It runs to the next one. And when it runs up there, it hits it back the other way. I suspect this one is going to be a lot more difficult to stay, you know, to get into and get over than this one was. Even though this is the big bar, this is the breakdown bar from here. And so now you're testing into the breakdown area and the bearish retest regenerate. So gold flipping around, going to go back the other way. Those trades that the dollar, a strong dollar, hurts are going to get hurt. Those that have benefits are going to get benefits. If the dollar is strong, that's going to help the European markets a little bit, for example. And they just took a huge spill off of two days, so they'll probably get a little bounce. Um, they'll probably test lower and then try to bounce. Here, it's all about this election. Uh, it, it's, people are totally fixated on the election. I don't know that this market can do all that much until that's out of the way. Had a uh, viewer ask me a question having to do with an article that I wrote back um, oh, beginning of this month, actually, October 4th, on Market Watch. Had to do with the oil market. Uh, let me shrink this a little bit so you can see it and get it in the focus here. So w what we were talking about was as this, as this comes back into the swing point high, which is where it's at now, right? That is where you would expect oil to try to bullishly retest and regenerate to the top side. And so as it gets back in there, um, it looks to me like that's what it's trying to do. And so the question is, is, is it time to buy some oil stocks? And so here's a um, more recent picture, right, current picture. And if we look at this, uh, you know, what you have here, this, this was a swing point high. Um, you know, that, that area there is coming back into. Uh, I actually mislabeled that chart you were looking at. The swing point high was over here. But as it came back, as it's coming back towards that area, you know, it could still retrace a little bit farther. Uh, but as it's coming back towards that area, it's probably going to get some support. And it's coming into the highs of the lows now, uh, this swing point low. Is, is it going to go sideways? No, I, I think this is still bullish. I don't, th I don't think that picture's changed any. Uh, it still looks bullish to me the way it's set up here. Um, if, if you get too much more degradation to the downside, then maybe it's a different story. As far as the question, though, in terms of, you know, what should one uh, or, or should one buy, the question had to do specifically with Halliburton. And although this isn't the one that uh, the mentors and I have been looking at uh, the last few days uh, in terms of a position to take, uh, you know, it has a decent chart. So Halliburton comes back into a swing point high. Uh, the thing you don't like about this is, and, and many stocks are like this, is this is actually broke on a daily. It's broke underneath. 
uh, just slightly. Has to get back up in there uh, right away. It does have a high volume, you know, high volume top, which means you can trade back to it. I suspect if you take a position in Halliburton, it's not a bad trade uh, as long as you're patient. Looking at it on the weekly, just, you know, fading back into the swing point highs. Um, and, you know, if you go back all the way back to a monthly, you can see there's a lot of upside potential, potential ABCD structure, the upside, all that business. So, yeah, I mean, Halliburton, I think all these old stocks over time are, are not going to be bad places to uh, uh, put some of your money. Uh, they all are setting up uh, the way you would want. Uh, it's just can you ride out the big waves, right? Because these waves move pretty fast and pretty hard uh, once they start going. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that uh, crude oil is still a place to uh, have some money. I think the problem right now is not crude oil as much as the market. The, the general market is struggling. It's, it's at a crucial point here. Got a little bit of a turnaround uh, trying to start. Uh, needs to turn it right here right now because if it doesn't, I think is you're going to have to you're going to get to a point now where you're saying, hey, uh, this thing is not doing what it should do. And, and in particular, you know, I'll, I'll finish up here with this thought. You know, usually what you see when you come back in for the first time after six bars is you usually do not see it trade more than about a third of the way deep. A third of the way of this would be somewhere in there, right? We're almost half at this point. This market needs to get out of here, and it needs to get out of here now. If it doesn't, I think you're going to see even more pressure to the downside. That's it for tonight. Have yourself a great one. I think we'll get a bounce tomorrow, but, uh, you know, the question is, is can it bounce very far? Have a great one. I'll take care, and I'll see you next time.